The song, It Is Well With My Soul, is a very popular Christian song written by Horatio Spafford. But Horatio Spafford had many tragedies happen to him in his life. His only son died in 1871, then followed the Great Chicago Fire, which financially ruined him. He sent his wife and daughters to Europe on a boat, which had a collision with another boat. Through that, he suffered the loss of all four of his daughters. He sailed out to the very spot where his daughters died and wrote the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Later, he moved to Jerusalem and helped found the group called the American Colony, where he faithfully served the poor and needy. Today, in the old city, is the Spafford's Children's Center. I sat down with Yantin Dejani and asked her, what is the Spafford's Children's Center? The Spafford Children's Center is, an, is a center that uh, cares for children in different ways. Um, it grew out of a uh, children's hospital uh, to the community center as it works now. We aim for a holistic approach to the child, meaning that we look at the child from different angles, uh, not just the physical medical angle, but also preventive treatment, uh, social uh, treatment, um, psychology services, special education for children who have problems and um, treatment for traumatized children uh, in the sense of expressive art therapy, um, counseling, case therapy, all these kinds of things to help children overcome their problems. And next to that we have a uh, cultural department that um, has a lot of activities for children and for youth to help them in, uh, yeah, how shall I say that, in having things next to their school and home environment where they can come and do something, discover if they have a talent or skill, uh, learn some youth leadership, uh, activities activities, responsibilities, uh, so that they can be can do something in the in the society, in the community. And uh, as a last thing, because if you work with children, you also work with mothers, you um, we started uh, women empowerment projects for women so that uh, they would learn something more and uh, therefore be better able to help their children. They would expand their knowledge because these lectures are of course mainly geared towards uh, uh, understanding their child, the, the role of a woman in the society, a life cycle of a woman is from a psychological, a physical and a social aspect. So all kinds of things that might concern a woman and that might uh, make her understand her own problems better and how to solve them. So when was the children's centre established? Um, as, a, as a children's centre it was more or less established in the 1980s. Uh, but the story started uh, much earlier. Um, this, uh, the American family Spafford coming to the Holy Land in 1881 uh, after lots of personal tragedies. Uh, they settled in the building that is now the Spafford Children's Center. And here they lived for many years till more friends came and joined them and the building became too small to house them all and they moved out to another place. But keeping the original building in the old city of Jerusalem first as a handicraft school for girls and later growing into a hospital. That happened actually in 1925 on Christmas Eve when the daughter of the original people that came to the Holy Land uh, was going down from the school of handicrafts to sing carols in Bethlehem and she met on Christmas Eve, this man with a donkey, and on the donkey, his sick wife with a baby in her arm. 
They had been on their way to the hospital, which was located in the old city at the time. But there was no place. Uh, the hospital actually was closed because of uh, Christmas Eve. And when she saw this, then, of course, she took action and she got the woman admitted to the hospital. Um, but the next morning, the man came to her with his baby son and said, look, my wife died during the night and I cannot care for my son on my own. Uh, can you not take him and, and raise him? Uh, this is what she did. She brought him to the school for the girls and she called the nurse for the, for the baby. But when this story got around in the community, then more babies were brought and uh, more abandoned children. And uh, the building became a home for uh, for yeah, abandoned babies, foster babies, whatever. Uh, and the handicraft school moved out to another place. But when you have a baby home, babies get sick. So you need uh, more care, more nurses, a doctor, and it soon grew into a hospital. And it has been a children's hospital ever since uh, till 1970 when after the six day war we suddenly the hospital suddenly instead of in Jordan found itself in Israel the song it is well with my soul is a very popular Christian song written by Horatio Spafford but Horatio Spafford had many tragedies happen to him in his life his only son died in 1871 then followed the great Chicago fire which financially ruined him He sent his wife and daughters to Europe on a boat which had a collision with another boat. Through that he suffered the loss of all four of his daughters. He sailed out to the very spot where his daughters died and wrote the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Later he moved to Jerusalem and helped found the group called the American Colony, where he faithfully served the poor and needy. Today in the old city is the Spafford's Children's Center. I sat down with Yantin Dejani and asked her, What is the Spafford's Children's Center? The Spafford Children's Center is an is a center that uh, cares for children in different ways. Um, it grew out of a uh, children's hospital uh, to the community center as it works now. We aim for a holistic approach to the child, meaning that we look at the child from different angles. Uh, not just the physical medical angle but also preventive treatment, uh, social uh, treatment, um, psychology services, special education for children who have problems and um, treatment for traumatized children uh, in the sense of expressive art therapy Um, counseling, play therapy, all these kinds of things to help children overcome their problems. And next to that we have a cultural department that um, has a lot of activities for children and for youth to help them in, uh, yeah, how shall I say that, in having things next to their school and home environment where they can come and do something, discover if they have a talent or skill, uh, learn some youth leadership uh, activities, responsibilities, uh, so that they can be can do something in the in the society, in the community. And uh, as a last thing, because if you work with children, you also work with mothers, you, um, we started uh, women empowerment projects for women so that uh, they would learn something more and uh, therefore be better able to help their children. They would expand their knowledge because these lectures are, of course, mainly geared towards uh, 
uh, understanding their child, the, the role of a woman in the society, a life cycle of a woman, this from a psychological, a physical, and a social aspect. So all kinds of things that might concern a woman and that might uh, make her understand her own problems better and how to solve them. So when was the Children's Centre established? Um, as, a, as a children's center, it was more or less established in the 1980s, uh, but the story started uh, much earlier, um, this, uh, the American family Spafford coming to the Holy Land in 1881 uh, after lots of personal tragedies. Uh, they settled in the building that is now the Spafford Children's Center and here they lived for many years till more friends came and joined them and the building became too small to house them all and they moved out to another place but keeping the original building in the old city of Jerusalem first as a handicraft school for girls and later growing into a hospital that happened actually in 1925 on Christmas Eve when the daughter of the original people that came to the Holy Land uh, was going down from the School of Handicrafts to sing carols in Bethlehem and she met on Christmas Eve this man with a donkey and on the donkey his sick wife with a baby in her arm. They had been on their way to the hospital, which was located in the old city at the time, but there was no place. Uh, the hospital actually was closed because of uh, Christmas Eve. And when she saw this, then of course she took action and she got the woman admitted to the hospital. Um, but the next morning the man came to her with his baby son and said look my wife died during the night and I cannot care for my son on my own uh, can you not take him and, and raise him uh, this is what she did she brought him to the school for the girls and she called the nurse for the, for the baby but when this story got around in the community, then more babies were brought and uh, more abandoned children. And uh, the building became a home for, uh, for yeah, abandoned babies, foster babies, whatever. Uh, and the handicraft school moved out to another place. But when you have a baby home, babies get sick. So you need uh, more care, more nurses, a doctor, and it soon grew into a hospital. And it has been a children's hospital ever since uh, till 1970, when after the Six Day War, we suddenly, the hospital suddenly, instead of in Jordan, found itself in Israel. And uh, there were not enough funds uh, to continue being a charitable hospital. Moreover, the medical standard in Israel was very high, and we definitely could not comply with all the, the conditions and requests, or not even requests, demands that the Israeli health ministry made uh, to upgrade the hospital. So it was decided to close down as a hospital and become a day clinic. And as such, it stayed uh, a day clinic with vaccination and preventive services till 1980, 1987 actually, when we... Uh, when the Intifada started and lots of social and psychological problems uh, uh, occurred and the center uh, started with a social worker, a psychologist, uh, uh, slowly, slowly adding more services that were needed um, 
till it grew into the center as it works now with a holistic approach to the child. Acosta Center is here in the old city and before 1967 that was Jordan. How did the war of 1967 affect the hospital here? Well, we, I was not here at the time. I came in 1968 when it was still a hospital, but I was not here during the war. Uh, but the stories uh, that I heard is that they, of course, the threat of war was there, so as many children as possible were sent to their parents. But some parents couldn't come, and there was a remnant of patients. Uh, much of the staff also had gone home, but they stayed a small group. And, um, yeah. It was clearly a hospital, so when the Israeli army came in, they came into the building, they wanted to go on the roof because it was it is a high place and you have a very good view over the surrounding from the roof. But um, they also protected the hospital and uh, nothing happened very much. But the after effects, of course, was that, yes, uh, suddenly we were into Israel and had to comply with Israeli law and uh, regulations. And that was quite different from what we were used to. Yeah. Now you say you came here in 1968. What sort of changes have you seen over here in the hospital in Jerusalem itself? Well, quite a lot of changes. Um, I didn't stay here since 68 all the time after after closing down the hospital section after section till the last closed in in 1970 uh, i stayed on for another half year in the clinic but then i wanted to specialize and i left uh, uh, this uh, the center as it has be had become then um, to pursue my own uh, studies and life, but uh, and this I did partly in America and partly in Holland. Um, I got married in Holland with a Palestinian doctor that I had met during my time here, and he also specialized. And in 1978, when we were both finished with our specialization, we decided to return to Jerusalem. And since 1978, I have stayed here all the time. Um, from 1978 till now, of course, there have been many changes. We have gone through very turbulent times with two intifadas and seen the situation deteriorate more and more. But the center has been uh, adjusting to the needs of the, of the people uh, during these times. And uh, at the moment it's functioning as it is, not anymore for all the Palestinians, but only for those that can reach us, which are mainly the ones in Jerusalem because the building of the separation wall is preventing all our former patients coming to the clinic uh, and using all the services that we have to help at least the, the patients in a medical way we have started outreach clinics in uh, Bethany and in Taibe uh, where many of our former patients and also new patients are coming now and we are thinking if we have enough funding to also introduce new services there which are very much needed like speech therapy uh, psychological services um, cultural activities with uh, psychological slant because most of our activities are having a psychotherapeutic um, um, side to it uh, with lots of counseling and, and teaching children uh, their culture and, and yeah artistic skills which can help them in, in adjusting to uh, traumatic experiences. 
So you must have seen a lot of people come through your doors. Why do you do what you do? Sorry. Seen a lot of people come through your doors. Why do you do what you do here? Oh yes, yes, sure. Um, yes, I have met lots of people. We have had many talks and discussions about uh, situation, about the effects of everything that is happening here. And but unfortunately, uh, we do not see much improvement over the time. Why do you do what you do, though? What's what's your motivation behind what you do? Well, I'm a doctor, I'm a trained pediatrician, and I love children, and um, I do see that uh, if we do not do anything, then uh, this population will be so traumatized, will be still suffering from so many stresses that there will be no possibility for a change in, in thinking, in attitude getting us closer to finding a solution and learning to live together. Okay, Dr. Jantin, thank you very much. You're welcome.